So one of the um, questions that I frequently see on my blog as comments and also sent to me via email is in regards to the configuration of backgas regulators and hose lengths when it comes to a DIR style configuration for diving. So instead of constantly sending the same email out, I figured it's time to do a video posting that goes along with it so you can see how it's done. Um, so for this process, we're going to be using the Scuba Pro MK25 um, first stage unit. Um, this is the traditional DIR back gas first stage. Uh, it's also been rebranded uh, as a Halcyon regulator. Um, sorry, first stage. Um, if you're interested in that. Uh, the models in this video are actually a discontinued model. These are a version of the MK MK25 that comes in a black edition. They ceased doing production on this model as a result of overhead costs being too high because of the metal that was being used. Uh, other than that, these are the exact same first stage units that are currently being sold by Scuba Pro and by Halcyon, um, except they're on the Scuba Pro version, they're silver instead of black in this section, and on the Halcyon models, the trim on these is blue. Other than that, they're all exactly the same. Uh, clearly, you'll need two of them if you're doing back gases. From a second stage standpoint, we're using the Scuba Pro A7000 unit. Um, this is not a traditional DIR unit. And the reason for that is the front bezel on this is not removable. You'll notice there's four pins uh, that hold it in place so it couldn't be removed underwater. This is a very traditional cold water style regulator. The metal that it's built out of makes it survive and be a bit more durable and also handle the cold water environment a little bit better. Um, a more traditional DIR style unit is the S600 unit. Um, this is a plastic unit, uh, but unlike the A700, it does have a removable faceplate. When they ship, it has a pin that is right here on the unit. Um, this pin prevents the bezel from rotating, so it can't be removed. This is predominantly to keep less experienced recreational style divers from inadvertently removing the front plate and getting inside of the unit. Um, the pin is a very small plastic style pin that is easy enough to remove with a flathead screwdriver. Once that's removed, the front bezel of the unit can be taken off, allowing you to clean out any dirt or grime or anything like that you happen to pick up during cave diving or wreck penetration diving. And if you don't keep it screwed tightly on, then the removal process is fairly easy. Um, I use the S600 as a decompression regulator, um, so I traditionally keep the pin in. Getting the pin to line back up on the interior can be somewhat difficult um, because it does require the front bezel to be place just right so everything aesthetically looks fine. Easiest way to do that is line the S600 up with the top. And then from there the pin can be inserted into the side. So we're going to put the S600 away for the moment and focus on the back S set that I actually use. And as I said, that's the MK25 and the A700 units. Um, clearly need two of both of them. So when we're configuring these, we're going to set them out in front of us, and we're going to lay them out as a right and left post. So the first hose that we're going to deal with is going to be the high-pressure SPG hose. Uh, this is traditionally a 24-inch length hose. And on the unit itself, we're going to, traditionally this is just going to be a solid SPG. I do have the front plastic cover on mine um, more than anything else because I'm somewhat lazy and that's how Scuba Pro shipped it to me. So we're going to insert that into our post. Obviously on this we're going to need to remove the high pressure port that is securing it. 
and then from there it's a simple screwing process. Now these are do need to be lubricated on the O-rings. Uh, for this personally, I use Crystal Lube. Uh, Crystal Lube is an O2 compatible lubricant. Um, you can use silicone grease um, in the event that you're not using anything over 40% oxygen content. Um, since my rags get used across the board from 20 from hypoxic mixes all the way up to 100% O2, I just make it easy and I use Crystal Lube on everything. Uh, Crystal Lube is fairly expensive. Um, this tube, for example, is a $60 tube of Crystal Lube, um, but as you can see by the amount that is on my finger, um, you only need a small amount, and I've been using the same tube now for almost a year, um, so it's a one-time purchase, and as you'll see, this tube is still almost 100% full, it doesn't require much. Um, that just gets screwed in to the high pressure port on the downward side of the unit and I'll tighten it down a bit just to the point that it's snug doesn't need to be overly tight um, Hose covers are not necessary, and uh, a lot of DIR people will actually tell you the hose covers on them are a no-no. Um, we're just going to set the plug aside. From there, we're going to move on to installation of a dry suit inflator hose uh, that goes onto the swivel port, again facing down. Um, this is going to be a 22 or 24 inch uh, inflation hose. If you are not diving with a dry suit, this is not a necessary hose to install. Um, I personally use an inflator bottle with my dry suit, um, so this serves as a backup and also is used for inflating surface marker buoys and things of that nature. So. That there. Again, silicone grease or, at your preference, uh, crystal lube. And this is going to be tightened down a little bit past hand tight, but it doesn't need to be excessive. And that's going on your low pressure port. Uh, all of your all of your first stages when you get them uh, are usually going to have one of the low pressure ports already open. Um, that is your primary on there. One of the nice things about the MK25 is it has a fifth low pressure port that is on the side of the unit. Uh, this is fantastic for technical diving setups because it allows for a cleaner hose route. Uh, on this post, this is going to be our low pressure, our alternate uh, or our backup regulator. Uh, again, this is going to be on a 22 or 24 inch hose. Uh, with this style first stage, you can usually get away with the 22. Um, in the event that you are diving with a first stage where the hose faces down instead of to the side, you're probably going to need a 24 for it to fit comfortably. And before we attach that, we're just going to attach our We'll do that second. I'll go ahead and screw this in. Again, small amount of crystal lube. Clearly, before you start this process, wash your hands and your hands should be clean and debris free. So, this will go into the bottom port. Again, the hose covers are a no-no according to some people. Uh, personally, I like them. This can be a little bit harder to tighten just because of the fact that it is on a swivel. Uh, so it may require you to hold on to the inflator hose while you do this. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and attach the A700. On. 
This is again a extremely simple process. A lot of people uh, that are new into technical diving don't realize how easy it is to assemble the rigs. So as a result, they don't do it themselves. Um, unfortunately, by not doing it yourself, it leaves you not fully understanding how your unit functions. Um, so that takes care of one post. Uh, again, on this one, we have the SPG, we have our backup regulator, and we also have an inflator hose. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this um, with a DIN cap. With these, you're going to find that you can get plastic ones or metal ones. I find the metal ones work a lot better. Um, the plastic ones tend to um, get deteriorated. Uh, watch the quality on the metal ones you get though because there are two types available. Uh, you can end up with the really chintzy metal that is just painted uh, versus a metal that is actually colored. Uh, the painted metal tends to chip away over time and leaves little bits of paint inside of your regulator which is obviously no good. Moving on, we're going to go to the next post, and again on this, we're going to need only two ports removed on this. All that's going to be attached to this one is our 7-foot primary hose, uh, that is our breathing regulator, and then we're also going to install our inflation hose that attaches to our wing. Um, the wing inflation hose is going to be a 22-inch uh, inflator, and that's going to put the inflation hose right about here. Um, a lot of people feel this is short, but what it does is it keeps your inflation hose nice and, uh, nice and snug against your body. So we have our 7 foot hose that's going to install not on the side here, but on the base. Um, this is going to allow it to route straight downward uh, during the time that we're diving and gives us a nice clean line. So just to recap on that, the backup goes on to the side, and then the 7-foot primary hose goes on to the base. I'm just going to screw that in. Tighten it up a little bit, and our 7-foot length is good to go. We'll go ahead and install the second stage on that and all of the hoses I'm using are halcyon hoses and that's because they sell the hoses already pre-done in the nice sizes um, you'll have some people that use the MyFlex hoses uh, it's another question I frequently get as to why rubber versus MyFlex. Uh, the MyFlex hoses tend to be a little bit possibly buoyant, so as a result, when you put them on a 7-foot hose, they float, uh, and you'll find them floating above your head every now and then, which I've never liked at all. Uh, so, moving on, we're going to install our inflation hose for our wing. Again, just give it a little, little tightening past the, uh, past what would be considered hand tight, just to make sure it's there. And then we're going to go ahead and put a DIN cap on. And our regs are all set. And it's pretty much as simple as that. So again, for your back gas configuration, what you're going to need is two matching first stages. Uh, two matching second stages, a SPG, a primary 7-foot hose, a backup hose for our hose for our backup regulator, which is either a 22-inch or 24-inch, depending on the situation, uh, the SPG hose, which is a 24-inch hose, and your inflator hose, which is also going to be a 22-inch, and your dry suit hose, which is going to range in length between 22 to 26 inches, depending on your size. Um, so that pretty much covers that, and we'll move on to the hose routing section of this podcast, video cast, whatever you want to call it.
Okay, so moving on to the portion of putting the regs onto the tanks. The first one we're going to deal with is our left post, which contains our SPG, our backup inflator slash dry suit hose, as well as our alternate air source slash backup regular. This is going to screw into the left post. These are DIN style tanks, as all double setups should be. We're going to put those hand tight. This rag is going to lay across the top. And our SPG is going to clip onto our waist. Now, you're not going to be able to see this in this portion of the video, but when I put this on my wife, you'll notice that the SPG line is going to run down between the wing and the tank itself. The backup inflator hose would traditionally connect into our dry suit. Casey is not going to be wearing a dry suit tonight for the demonstration because, like me, she uses her uh, she uses an inflator bottle with her dry suit. So we're going to run the backup line down the side here. You'll notice the swivel. I'm going to run it through both plastic portions. And I'm going to run it back up. This is going to keep it nice and snug inside. Move on to our right post. Our right post is going to contain our seven foot hose as well as our primary inflation hose. When you do this, make sure the backup is sitting on top. We're going to run the inflator hose underneath so our alternate is free. This again is going to run down through the rubber bands. Okay, our seven foot hose runs behind the wing, just as we did with the SPG. This puts out in front. Now, I'm just going to fix this twist down here. And this is going to result in a nice clean line. And again, in the event that you had a dry suit, this hose would be connected to the dry suit. Okay? All right, so we're going to get Casey in here, and we're going to throw this on her. Clearly, this is not my wing. I stay away from the bright pink colors. Mine's a nice black. Uh, Casey, on the other hand, likes the bright pink, so we're going to put this on her so I can show you the exact way the hoses route down the unit. All right, so now that we have the tanks on our victim, uh, we're going to start on the right post, and as you'll notice, the long hose is running down the side of the tank behind the wing, and it comes, comes up underneath the canister light. And then runs up and around. This allows for the hose to be easily deployed out to our buddy. Okay. In addition, on that side, we have the inflator hose that runs down the side of the body into the inflator hose port and onto the inflator itself. On this post, we have our SPG that runs down back behind the tank, clips onto the side. These are clipped onto the side. You'll see some people wearing them up top in this position, but once we add a few deco bottles on here, them being clipped to the side becomes important. It allows us to deploy it out, unclip it, and bring it out in front of us from a visibility standpoint. On this as well, we have the backup inflator hose slash dry suit hose that comes down the inflator, down the inflator hose and clips back in. We also have the alternate as um, alternate second stage on here that runs down and is secured around the neck. And that's our layout.